Welcome into the second edition of the Pile Pack Coaches Show as we start off this week with a view at soccer. Jim Tersey and Asa Biasi joining us from women's soccer. Thanks so much. You guys recovered from the long road trip. A distance isn't necessarily something that's always fun to travel, is it? No, it, it was the trip was easy actually. The games were difficult, mm -hmm. um, but uh, the trip itself was not a problem. In terms of tra driving out there, I mean Walla Walla and Spokane. I mean, what'd you guys do on the bus to kind of kill time and make the trip go shorter? We we watched a lot of movies and ate a lot of food. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was the biggest thing. It was, it was a good team bonding experience, though. I enjoyed it. Chase talked about that when we had him on the show last week about the opportunity to kind of get to know each other because you had so many new faces. Um, from the coaching perspective, what did you see in terms of your team during that road trip getting to know each other a little bit better? Well, I think it was the first time we didn't sleep on a bus. Most of the kids usually sleep, so we made them stay up. And they they actually they actually. Uh, uh, seemed to be closer as a group. We got a little bit closer. We got to know each other a little better. Um, so in that sense, it was a lot better. Uh, you know, we had again two tough games. Playing up there was never easy. Uh, you know, Whitworth is certainly a powerhouse, and we played pretty well against them, held our own. Unfortunately, Whitman is a team we could have we could have won, but they had no game on the day before, so they got us fresh. I mean, the schedule was just. Horrific in that sense. We travel. They didn't have a game on Saturday, and they're waiting for us on Sunday. And, and those two combinations just didn't sit well for us. Uh, on the tail end of what he said, in terms from your perspective, what did you notice about the games themselves this weekend? Um, games, though, I, I definitely think there's a home field, field advantage. We're used to playing on brand new turf. I think we're pretty spoiled here. So every time we go away, we're playing on grass. Not used to the the natural surface. And just the traveling, it, it tends to drain everybody. No one sleeps as good in a hotel as they do in their own bed. So I think we were definitely at a disadvantage, but it showed pretty well for you know the things we had going against us. So. You, and you played well. You had your foot on a couple of shots and whatnot, but talk about your performance and how you felt like you did, especially maybe even up to this point in the season now that we're about halfway through. Um, this weekend, I don't think it was my best performance. <laughs> um, definitely not on Saturday. I did a lot of ball watching. But I'm working on fixing that. Um, I played a little bit more defensively on Sunday, and you know I thought I did better there. I gotta gotta get those shots in the corners instead of at the goalkeeper, though. But overall, I've seen I've seen progress in myself over the season. I'm proud with what I've accomplished so far. <laughs> you talked about some of the things that you want to work on. What did you kind of set for yourself at the beginning of this week? Um, we actually we did as a team start setting personal and team goals for ourselves before every game. We all go around and say something. And this weekend, one of my goals was. Getting off the ball quicker, I hold on to it for too long, get it taken away. So I was working on, you know, making a pass quick and getting up the field to help me attack more. So those are my two personal focuses for the weekend. She's a member of your really young squad coach. What have you seen halfway through the season in terms of the young kids' development? Well, in Austin, in, in, in her case, and, and most of the freshmen, is just, I think, being comfortable with me and just with the system and also with school in general, just the life on, I see on the road. Um, you know, she's made probably the most strides as a player coming in. I think she was probably behind the eight ball a little bit. I'm not sure, not knowing she was going to make the team even. And once she made the team, she started relaxing, showing her real abilities. You know, she is a threat. She just strike a ball on a few that can. And I think what she said about her own personal goals is what she needs to work on, and, and she'll be fine. Heading into this weekend, talk about ball striking and trying to end the scoreless weekend. <laughs> Heading into uh, Linfield at home, Pio Stream broadcast, and then you have Willamette as well. Talk a little bit about some of the things that you're hoping to develop in this week's practice. Well, in reality, we, we, we have about three or four games where we can possibly win a game and going into the second half of the season that we, we could compete with. Um, but again, our biggest problem is scoring goals. Uh, so we, we shake things up this week. I'm moving different people in different positions, trying to get something more offensively for us. Um, it's difficult to win games when you can't score a goal. I mean, you're basically always defending. And, and I think that's one thing that we have to, to adjust the second half of the season. We've seen everybody once now. We realize some teams are better than us. But um, there's, there's games out there that we can't win. It's interesting to hear a coach say that because you, you start out with this program at the beginning and you recognize the games that you're going to be in, the games that you don't feel like you're at this year. To, to hear that because you don't always hear that from someone. Why do you approach it with, with that kind of mindset? Well, um, this, re this reality. I mean, uh -huh. I, mean I, I don't think I'm saying anything that kids don't don't know. I mean, I hear it from them and it says, they oh, we got Linfield. You, know, you just feel that there's a – and there's, there's a difference. I mean, there's, there, there's just – 
there's teams that know how to win, believe they can win, and unfortunately we haven't got there. We're used to you know losing the history mm -hmm. of it, and I think we accept it too easily. So you know we're trying to do is find those few games where where we can't compete. I mean we're certainly just as good as some of these teams, and try to believe we can win those games, and that's what we're trying to strive for really. And you're in your first year with this program, so how do you start developing a change in that, even long-term vision? What do you think? Well, you know in a sense, I mean identifying athletes that could that can compete. Um, you know, in reality, we have four or five players that are really athletic that, that have no problem competing in this league. And unfortunately, we just don't have enough of them. And, and so, you know, my job when I came here was to recruit, get some kids in here, um, change that, that attitude. And, and um, you know, the kids have been great this year, but again, I think we all agree that losing is not fun. Um, and until we change that uh, as a group, it's it our continuing. So, Either the group we have is going to have to change that philosophy, and, or players are coming in and are going to have to be different, different attitudes. So being part of this team this year, Austin, and you look at change and trying to develop those different philosophies, what are some of the things that you feel like are your responsibility because you're part of the team that's, that's here this year? How do you feel like you can affect that? I think it's important that we have to – our team is so young – that people can't be afraid to step up and show some leadership no matter what their age is. And I've tried to do that a little bit, you know, leading lines and warm-ups, whatever it may be, even the small things. Um, and inspiring positivity, I think that's one of the big things. We tend to, when you lose a lot, you tend to be negative about everything. Like every missed pass, every bad touch, you get on each other. But it's important to just keep inspiring each other, telling them to work hard, and they'll do better next time. So the last thing uh, before we go, Linfield Willamette, kind of different games last time out because that Willamette game was a heartbreaker right at the end. Linfield was able to shut you out. So talk to me a little bit about what you anticipate this weekend, having played each team already once. Um, now that we've played them both, we know their their playing style. We know what to expect going into the game, and um, I think we'll be better prepared for both teams, and we'll know not to let down at the end against Linfield. We'll go up for the full 90 minutes, and with Linfield, we just have to pretty much the same thing. They tend to get in there hard for a good 20 minutes, scoring their goals within that time range, and we have to step it up big time during those 20. So. Well, we appreciate you joining us, Austin. Stick around. We're going to have you do the power punch at the end. So, um, you'll find out, <laughs> and uh, Coach will let you go, but we'll see you on Saturday. Thank you very much. All right, thanks All right. so much. Jim Tercey, Austin Bias, for joining us. As we get set for uh, football coming up next. We'll talk to Keith Welch and uh, his offensive head man. Bill Meg Bonwa. So that'll come up next in just a moment when the Pile Pat Coaches Show continues. Welcome back, Pile Pat Coaches Show. As we're now joined by football, I'm Ryan Goff with Phil Magbangwa and also Keith Welch. Guys, thanks for hanging out. On, I mean, this has got to be a lot of fun to brag about your team. You guys get to come out here having posted the most wins by a Lewis and Clark team since what 2003. How did you feel about last weekend and getting a, a good win against a team that you had never beaten before at the school? It's been a great couple of weeks for us. Um, the excitement that's around the school and around the team has been. Um, a big thing for us, and being able to practice with the wins under our belt has um, been very energizing. Um, going week to week and expecting different, expecting wins, and going in with uh, game plans and confident about the game plans and confident in our players, it's, it's very exciting. Right? Talk a little bit about that confidence, Keith, because he gave it from the coach's perspective. But on the field, do you guys feel like you're able? to really do anything that you want at this point based on the last couple weeks? Yeah, now it's like we, we believe we're going to win. Like, it seemed like last year it didn't seem like that. Like, we came out there ex like trying not to lose. Now we go out there ready to win. And, you know, we all have confidence in each other, so practice is funner. We all believe in each other, believe in the culture schemes. And they feel like we're getting older now, too, so it's like a 
last year we were learning. Now we're like we're playing. We know what we're doing already. We don't have to think as much and just do it. So it's easier. Contrast the last two opponents because Pacific's a newer program. But Keith, you have Menlo, who's a team that even probably got bigger because they had some new athletes coming in from a year ago. How were they different, and, and what did you learn about your team because of maybe how different they were? Uh, I think Pacific, we went in there not like expecting to win, and Menlo was like a game we felt like we had to play our best game to win, and so it was like I think they brought out the be better opponent. I mean, better like. Our, they brought us better out of us, mm -hmm. you know, because we knew we had to play a great game to win. And Pacific, we kind of came in there not knowing we were going to win, but we were expecting to win. So I think it made us play better versus Menlo. Yeah, we were talking about with Tim Jacobs last week, you know, Pacific was a new team. So what does that mean? You either don't know anything about them or they're a new program that you can run over, and it's kind of a double-edged yeah. sword. But I've liked the way the team has played the last couple of weeks. I was joking with Tim about how I brought him on because of the shutout. All you did was put up 48 points. <laughs> well, the scoring average and even the rushing game, we've talked about how this team ranks 11th in the nation in Division Three football for rushing. What kind of start were you expecting going into fall camp, just seeing what athletes you had, and how happy are you with what you've been able to put together? With my background, I've been traditionally a, a passing guy. I didn't expect this to be a, such a good running team, but at the same time, my philosophy offensively is to take what they give us. And since uh, we have been able to come out running, and teams have been uh, neglectful of the running of the quarterback in the running game, um, it's been a big advantage for us. I mean, versus the Pomona. Bubba over here ran for uh, 241 yards, having 26.8 carry, and that was that was a big deal. If they count for everyone else, forget the quarterback, and he's got a chance for quarterback running. I didn't expect this to be such a big running team, but now that we know that we can run the ball, we should continue to do so. Talk about your relationship with your offensive coordinator. What's right. it like? I mean, this is like one of the coaches. Like, he's not just a coach; he's someone I can come and talk to. He's like a friend. So, it's, I mean, I mean, I respect everything he says. So, I mean, I have that respect for him. So like when you respect somebody, you're gonna listen to him, and then he has he's like a friend too. So it's like good both ways. How about for yourself? I mean, you have this guy. It's your friend. <laughs> <laughs> young young kid over here, freshman. Yeah. He he does a good job though. He's probably one of the best quarterbacks I've been around in my career in my in my uh, entire career that has known the game of football. Um, I I always use the example his first ever huddle. Usually quarterback come in and say. Um, I've got this, and try to whip out the play call and have probably parts of it. Uh, Bubba's the first quarterback I've known to come in and to this type of system, as complex of a system as it is, go into the first huddle and say, uh, and whip out the play call like he's been doing it for years. And that's refreshing for me as a coach, and knowing that he is a, a football guy and understands the game. Um, at the same time, it's it's good for us as uh, to have trust in each other. Um, you know, there's a friendship there, but the trust is uh, is big to, for him to come off the sideline and him to be able to tell me what he's seeing out there and tell him what I'm seeing and um, be able to go back and forth very similar to you know the, what you see with Peyton Manning and his um, his players and his coaches a very high respect level to understanding what or seeing what we see. Where's Bubba come from? That, well, that's the only thing I know from back home. Like when I first came out, my mom—that's the first thing she called me. I've never been called anything else from my parents or any of my family, like close friends. Everybody calls me Bubba. That just kind of rubbed off. Yeah, because my dad's Keith, there. so like it's weird. Like he calls me Keith sometimes, and it gets weird. I don't know. <laughs> awkward. Gets real yeah. awkward. <laughs> Keith is when you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much fun has it been this year? Because were you frustrated with last year not being able to play? Yeah. As much as you would have liked. Yeah, last year was rough for me. It was a new experience being out, out here away from family. So it was like. A learning experience, you know, I grew up a lot. This year it's funner because I'm playing now, and I'm not as, like, stressed because I'm, I'm used to it now. So I grew up. I feel like I grew up a lot, so it's way better. Is it true in high school you were athlete of the decade? Yeah, I got named that. What, how did you get that? I mean, you are there for four years. What, what, did, what kind of things did you do that made you stand apart from ten years worth of... I mean, I think it was because I played three sports, and, like, we were successful most in all three of the sports. And, I mean, football played a lot of that. And I was a lot, I was I talked to the news reporters a lot. So like that was cool, though. and I, my grades were high too. So, so from a, from academically and athletically, yeah. you were excelling, mm -hmm. and you're good with the media, which we like, <laughs> of course. So, bye week. What do you guys do before you get set to, you know, go all back on the road in a couple of weeks? Well, our biggest focus this week, uh, as I mentioned with the guys, is recovery. Make sure we're getting our bodies back in shape. Um, naturally, through the season, you don't get to work out quite as much. You don't get to run quite as much. You've got conditioning, and you go to practice hard, but you tend to lose a little bit of, um, of your uh, 
you know, two max throughout the season. So we're trying to get back in shape, recovery. We've got a, we've got a couple guys dinged, but by the time we get through this bye week, we should be back in full force. And on top of that, we get to focus a little bit stronger on UPS, and it's going to be a very big game for us.